Father Lord, it's a privilege to be in your presence once again. Father, we pray that the Holy Spirit guides us in everything that we are going to do here. We commit each and, and everyone here. May you open their hearts to learn from what is going to be taught. May you silence all the all other voices so that they hear only your voice. We commit those who are going to lead us, Lord, speak through them and may they only speak what you tell them, what you speak to them. Father, bless this time, bless the internet, bless, um, bless the network, bless each and everyone, the word, the worship, everything, Lord. We need your presence, it's all about you. We honor you, we magnify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Lord, I also just agree with your maid servant in that prayer. I pray for open heaven uh, this very minute. I pray, Lord, that the heavens above upon this uh, uh, at this meeting will be opened. Lord, for clarity. Lord, for divine connection to your heartbeat. Lord, that nothing will be done in the arm of the flesh. But Lord, your purpose, your counsel, and your will will be done. I also pray, faithful Father, that as I open my mouth, you will fill it, O oh Lord, with your word this season and this moment. And let's, at the end of it all, let your name be glorified. Precious Holy Spirit, we request humbly for your help in this moment to lead, to guide our heart and our thoughts in line with your purpose and your counsel for this moment. I also pray, Father, for every heart that are here on the platform. Lord, help us to have our heart open and let our heart be receptive to the word you have for us now. And let this word mix with faith in our heart. Let it produce, oh God, a result that will bring praise and glory to your holy name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. We need to be part of this together. Can I have an amen, 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 amen? Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy. And at his press, and at his at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. And that's what we are here for. We are in the presence of our heavenly father. Indeed, God, we believe for it. We believe you for the impossible. Tonight, uh, this morning, your time, I know there are many of us from different parts of the world. We're all from different parts of the world. It's morning for some of us. It's afternoon for some of us. It's evening for some of us. Uh, all right. Okay. Okay. I'll do that, Brother Grant. Got it. Thank you. Right. So we, we thank the Lord for the joy to be here together. I am still going to share my screen because I would like us to read a couple of scriptures together uh, so that we just proclaim the scripture together as we look into this uh, teaching time. Uh, uh, for some of you that are just joining us, we are trusting the Lord to have first the teaching time and then followed up with our time of prayer. So uh, I would like us to read uh, just two scriptures together. First, we're going to read uh, the book of Luke, Luke chapter uh, 11. I'd like us to read it together. Uh, we all unmute ourselves. If you can, if you're able, if you're in a place where you can be able to unmute yourself, I'd like you to please unmute and let's read together. Luke chapter 11 is on the screen. Yeah. Luke chapter 11, and we're going to read together from verse 1 only up to verse 4. And then we go to the book of Psalm. So at the count of two, let's read together. Let's go ahead. Luke 11 from verse 1. Let's go. Now, Lord, teach us to pray. And turn off 
also forgive everyone who is indebted to us and do not lead us into temptation. Amen, amen, and amen. amen. Now let's read the second scripture. The second scripture we're going to read is from the book of Psalm, Psalm 133, and is a scripture we're all going to read together as well. Psalm 133 is only three verses, so we can read it together. Psalm 133, and then from verse 1. Let's go. Let's read together. Let's go. Behold, how good and how good it is. It is the blessing life for everyone. Amen. Amen. Remove whatever is preventing you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Give a revelation. Amen. Amen. You are. Hallelujah. Give thanks the Lord for now we can all be muted, please. Uh, can we all please be muted now? Thank you all. Yes. Let's all be muted now so that we can have a time now to go into the teaching. By the grace of God, we are looking at this very important topic, uh, simply called the prayer legacy. The prayer legacy is what we're looking at at the moment. And um, while I was called to give the teaching time for today, I was just seeking the face of the Lord, what the Lord will want me to talk about. And, uh, this thought came to my heart as we run up our year on this wonderful and amazing platform called the Global Family uh, Prayer Platform. The Lord is just dropping to my heart a thought, and that thought is, how long is this journey? And that was some questions that I was asked that the Lord was asking me in my heart. Yeah, the Global Family 24-7 prayer platform, we thank the Lord for how God, um, just about a year ago, birthed the vision himself. So but then we need to ask ourselves, how long are we going to run this journey with the Lord? Can this be a movement? Can it be a prayer legacy that we're going to pass on to the next generation? Can this vision last 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, 100 years, probably? But I'd like us to look at the scripture we first look at. The first scripture we look at was from the book of Luke chapter 11. And from that Luke 11, there is an insight that we discovered there in that Luke 11 and verse number one. When the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ came to him, they said something very profound. They said in verse 1 of that Luke chapter 11, the Bible said, Now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place. The Lord Jesus Christ was praying in a certain place. When he sees that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples. Our Lord Jesus Christ, as a leader, was found in the habit of praying. The disciples that were following him noticed this lifestyle of prayer. And when he stopped praying at that time, they came to him and then referred to him 
a very profound statement. Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciple. Very important. In other words, the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ saw something in the ministry of John the Baptist. He was a man of prayer. He molded prayer. He also taught others how to pray. So prayer became like a legacy that John the Baptist handed over to his disciples. So the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to that verse of scripture that we read, when they saw also Jesus modeling prayer, praying like they, say, they can see, of course, there are several scriptures that we can see that actually depict the fact that our Lord Jesus Christ model prayer to the disciples. Mark, Mark chapter 1 verse 35 is one of them. The Bible says he wake up early in the morning, he goes to a remote place, and there he pray. So this, they, 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 they noticed all that. So they came to him and asked. We also saw John the, John the Baptist. He taught his disciples how to pray. Can you also teach us to pray? And of course, then the Lord Jesus Christ, of course, taught them to pray. But there is something I want us to look at today in the history of revival, a group of people that were known as the Moravians. I know many of us have heard about these people called the Moravian in the 17th um, um, century. Now, when you look at the Moravian, many, of course, for many of us who have heard about the history of these people, we will see in them uh, are people that birthed a revival that lasted over a hundred years. And I want us to look at these people with a little closer eye today. And that's why I felt that the Lord will want us to pray for the next one hour after we are looked at the Moravians. Now, when we're looking about Moravians, some of you are already very, very, very conversant with this history of the Moravians. But for the benefit of those of us who may not know who the Moravians are or who they were, let me just uh, kind of briefly give us uh, a background of this group of people. The congregation, this congregation called the Moravians, they were going through religious persecution from their homeland in Moravia in the year 1722. And then they moved to the estate of a man known as Count Nicholas Sizendorf. He was the one that received them. Why? Because the Moravian, as they were also called Moravian brethren, they were going through a very severe persecution to the point that they were exiled from their own homeland, Moravia, in 1722. So the man called Count Nicholas Sinzendorf received them and hosted them in his estate. However, because of this common persecution, they were together in that exile position. However, that is not only the only thing that happened to them. By the beginning of 1727, uh, about 300 of these people, they were having what is called a lot of disunity, brain pain. There was a lot of um, uh, 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 disunity among them. To the point that they were having strife. But these were people that were supposed to be together, together with one vision, one purpose and one assignment. However, at some point, they were having to struggle together because of strife. And when this strife was coming up, they agreed together now on the fact that, no, there's, some, there's something we must do to arrest the situation. And that's when they began to pray together. By August 1727, just about 24 men and 24 women covenanted together to spend one hour each day in secluded prayer. So they started what we call today 
uh, 24 hours uh, prayer. So they covenanted to agree together that, okay, we're going to be praying 24 hours. We everybody pick an hour. We need to arrest the dissension. We need to do something. We have, we have been exiled. We have a common challenge. So let's arrest the situation, but let's begin to pray. Let's pray for revival. Let's ask for our heart to be brought together in unity. Just 24 of these brethren began to pray. And that was the beginning of a revival that spread across the whole congregation and eventually lasted over 100 years. Global family brethren, the Lord has bathed this vision just about a year ago. A common goal for us to come together and pray on a platform, on a Zoom platform. And it came at the spur of a moment when we were looking at what the pandemic is. People are not able to go to church. People are going through a lot of things. We are having a lot of crisis. And then God used people like Brother Jonathan, uh, uh, Freeze, Brother uh, Granberry, Brother Jesse. They came together. Why don't we start something like this? Eventually, the vision was birthed. Just like when those 24 people, the Moravian 24 Moravians, when they started that journey, they probably never knew it was going to last 100 years. They probably never knew the impact of what they were just starting. They probably never knew how much God was going to do through what they started just by circumstance. And that's why I ask you, I'm asking you today, beloved, as you listen to what the Lord is saying today, I believe God has a word for you. If you are part of the Global Family Prayer Platform, either at the leadership level or participating or leading a prayer hour, the Lord has a word for you on this platform. God has a reason why Global Family Platform was birthed. Just like when God raised the Moravians and a few of them, 24 women and 24 men. Okay, let's start praying. Why this division? Why this dissension? Why this rancor? You know what? They discovered the challenge and they felt, no, why don't we arrange the situation by praying together? And this took out the result of their prayer together. By the time they began to pray, Eventually, it was called the Golden Summer of 724, when these people begin to pray. Their focus, their scriptural focus at that time was Leviticus chapter 6 and verse number 13. Leviticus. And the Bible says, let it shall never go out. So they agreed from inception, from day one, that this that we are going to start is going to be like in the light of Leviticus chapter 6, verse 13, whereby the light must never go off. The light must continue to burn on the altar. We must do this for the Lord. This fire must keep burning. So they agree from that moment that once we start in this, we are in for it. And I want to ask you today, beloved people of God, those of you that have been called by God to be part of Global Family Platform at whatever level, how long do you think the Lord has called you on this platform for? Do you see this as a vision birthed by man or by God? Do you see this as a calling that is called by God or by human? But I want you to please listen and learn for the Moravians. They discovered a challenge. They came together, a few of them, and eventually revival was born. But let's look at, like I was saying, a few things that is notable about these people. In May 12, 1727, this community enter into a covenant to emphasize the point they agree on 
rather than stressing their differences. May 12, 17, 27. These are facts in history. So in the first instance, that's why we read the book of Psalm chapter 33, Psalm 133, verse 1 to 3. As soon as they were beginning to come together to birth the revival, they said, no, the first thing that can help us to arrest this division among us is that we must enter a covenant to emphasize those points that we agree on rather than stressing the differences among us. So they, are in, they were intentional about the spirit of unity. They were saying, now we need to put aside what divides us. We need to put aside what is bringing this division, what is bringing this rancor, what it is that we need to emphasize. Eventually, they begin to emphasize the point that they were all in agreement with. And then by August 13, 2027, August 13, 17, 27, they were overwhelmed and filled with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at their communion service. They were having a communion service August 13, 17, 27, when the heavens opened upon them. Why? 24 men and 24 women were praying behind the scene. And then the people of God, the brethren, agreed together to be intentional about the unity of spirit. In other words, they created an atmosphere where the spirit of God was able to visit them. They were able to create an atmosphere of unity of spirit. And that's why we read that Psalm 133, where the Bible says, there the Lord commanded blessing, where there is unity of heart, unity of purpose, unity of spirit, unity of vision, God's presence is attractive. And that is why in August 13, 17, 27, the Moravian community, they were overwhelmed with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And you will leave, you see later on, eventually the Moravians have the motto, uh, what we call the mission statement of the Moravians. What is their mission statement? The, Mo the Moravian mission statement was that in essentials, we will be united. In non-essentials, there will be liberty. However, in all things, there will be love. That became their motto. That become what we call something like their mission statement. If we're going to use a contemporary word. That they said, that, well, we're going to come together that what is essential, we are going to be united about it. Whatever is non-essential, let's give some space for liberty. However, in everything, let love be the driving force. And that became the motto of the Moravians. In essentials, unity. In non-essentials, liberty. And in all things, love. And right from that moment, that the Spirit of the Lord visited the Moravians, and there was an outpouring of the Spirit of God upon the brethren, revival began. Prayer began. And like I said earlier on, they were focusing on Leviticus chapter 6. Everybody was bound by that commitment to ensure that there will be consistency of prayer on that altar. So everybody committed to it. So when the Spirit of God visited them, there was also something that is noted about these Moravian people. Another thing noted by them is the fact that they, were now, they now became very hungry for the word of God. To the point that they were having three services every day. I'm not saying services per week. Three services every day, 5 a.m., 7.30 a.m., and 9 p.m. They were so hungry for the word of God to the point that they were having three services per day. They were coming together to congregate. They were passionate about the word of God after that open heaven occurred. To the point that they were having three services, 5 a.m., 7.30 a.m., and 9 p.m. And then that open heaven eventually became the power of the Holy Spirit that made that revival fire 
to spread among them. Beloved, let's walk in the light of some of the things that we are mentioning about the Moravians. As we are looking at the prayer legacy for us as global family prayer platform, what can we learn from the Moravians? The Harvard is called self-love, self-will. They said self-love and self-will as well as all disobedience must be put aside. We are going to give grace to divine love of God so that love will be like our driving force. In essentials, we'll be unity. In non-essential, we'll prove liberty. But love will be our driving force. And let's remember that God himself is love. And where there is unity, the spirit of God will be there. Love became their driving force. Eventually, it became a legacy. Like I said, that because they were all looking at it in the light of Leviticus chapter 6, verse 13, nobody wants to say that the fire went off when it was my time. So it became a legacy among the Moravians that they were passing it on to their own children. To the point that they were giving it like a heritage, inheritance. They call their children, uh, my daughter, I am the one who have been praying the 12 hour slots every morning. I have done it for the past 35 years. Now I am 90, I'm about to go to be with my Lord. I give this to you as a heritage. Continue where I stop. Can you imagine that they began to give out their prayer hours like a, like, a, like a property, like an inheritance? Because they were so committed to the vision of that 24 hours prayer, they owned the vision. They own it. It was not as if it was started by 24 people now. It became an inheritance. I have these 24 hours. I am in the world. I'm the one who is in charge of 12 a.m. slot. It is my vision with God. And I am going to so much uh, be committed to the vision to the point that I'm going to hand it over to my family and the next generation. Wow. My prayer today is that the grace that the Moravian church received to be able to make that revival to last a hundred years, may the Lord pour that grace upon every single one of us in the almighty name of Jesus. May we see global family as not the vision of a man, but the vision that is birthed by God. When we see our prayer hours and our prayer slots, not as something that I am doing because I just want to occupy myself when I'm free, but as something that I will take as my own inheritance, that I will serve as long as Global Family 24-7 exists, it will be mine. There is ownership with God. I will serve on this platform to the point that I will give it out as a legacy to those who are coming after me. Wow. What a spirit that the Lord gave to the Moravians. Why? Because they chose to put aside what divides them. They chose to agree upon a common vision. They choose to buy into the vision together. They choose to own the vision. If they didn't see any man as the owner of the vision, they own it as under God. And eventually it became a legacy. Why? Because they stay focused on the vision. They said the fire must keep burning and let it never be said of me. It was through me that the flame went off. No, that was what made it a legacy. Their motto, like I said earlier, was that in an essentials, we'll be united. In non-essentials, there will be liberty. And in all things, there will be love. This was a major key that made their revival 
to last over a hundred years. To own the vision of global family prayer together. Can we be intentional to believe that the Lord, our God, will give grace to every single one of us to make sure that this journey is a journey of faith and we're going to walk it together. Because when a group of God's people are on a journey, they must be able to identify, they must be able to differentiate and agree on what is fundamental and what are non-fundamental. Because the fundamental issues are with the foundational issues of God's word. Like 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, where the Bible says, for the foundation of God standeth sure, and having this seal, that the Lord know them that are his, and let every man that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. 2 Timothy 2, 19. However, non-fundamentals are things that might not essentially cause damage to our faith or relationship with the Lord or even relationship with ourselves. So if we have a mindset of the Moravians that in essential things, fundamental things, we need to be united. And we must be able to define what is not the fundamental and give room. There was a time the Lord gave me opportunity and I was speaking on this platform. I said, let's give grace to one another. Grace to one. I don't know, maybe because I'm a pastor, they have a pastor in me. Let's give grace. We all have received grace. No more boss, is this still there? If Paul the apostle says, I see strife. So then, no more boss, I still, it's, it's, it's still, I'm still striving to the higher mark of the Lord Jesus. We are all still in the hand of the potter. We are just the clay. He's still making us. We are work in progress. We're not finished product yet ourselves. Well, maybe I'm speaking, speaking about myself. I'm not a finished product yet. I need grace here and there. I need mercy here and there. I need some help from God here and there. So if we need that grace from the Lord, why can't we give that grace to others and give room to know these are fundamental, these are non-fundamental, but let the umbrella be loved. They were passionate by a vision that were birthed by just a few. Psalm 68, verse 11. Psalm 68, verse 11, the Bible says, the Lord gave the vision, but great was the company of people that proclaimed it, that published it. When the vision was birthed in that 17, 20, 27, they never knew that it was something that's going to be more than them. But they believed it. They bought into the vision. They owned the vision. And eventually, it lasted more than most of them that started it. None of them lived over 100 years more. It lasted more than them because they made it a legacy. Their mission statement said it all. As I begin to round up, let's look at the impact of their prayer. When they began to pray, they became the very first Protestant church to begin to send missionary work, missionary out. They started missionary activity, sending people. More than 100 missionaries went forth from this small village community in less than 25 years. And at that time, that was more than the whole evangelical church had done in two centuries. And within 25 years, they were able to send 100 missionaries out. Why? A fire of prayer that started by 24 men, 24 ladies, because they also look at the foundation. They created an altar. They created an atmosphere of unity. They opened up to the overwhelming power of the Holy Spirit. They became thirsty for the word of God. They built a principle of love, unity, to give room for liberty, to identify what is essential and fundamental. When they apply this principle, Wow, there was revival, there was miracle. They began to send missionaries out. In the 25 years following the outpouring of the Spirit on this congregation, that is from that August 13, 2017, 27, the Moravian missionaries had carried the gospel not only 
to their community, not only to their community, but to every country in Europe. Also to many indigenous North and South America, Asia, and up to Africa. Can you imagine? Wow. By 1791, which was exactly 65 years after the commencement of that prayer vigil, the small Moravian community have sent 300 missionaries to the end of the earth. Amazing. The power of the principle of unity, the power of this principle of opening up to the corner of the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the principle of the thirst of the word of God, the power of the unity of our people that will agree together for our vision. Not after that, this community became like a spiritual retreat center that everybody from all over Europe, they began to come to come there to come and either just to be baptized in the Holy Spirit or to be saved, or just to receive revival fire. It became like a little Jerusalem. People began to do what is called pilgrimage. They just want to go to, to that community in Hanford. Just to be saved, be baptized the Holy Spirit, or just to receive the fire of the Holy Spirit. Beloved people of God, as a round of this time, can I ask you a question? How long do you think the revival of global family will last according to your level of commitment? According to the level of you buying into the vision of global family, how long will global family 24 seven last? According to you, to the level of your commitment, and to the way you see this vision, how long can the Lord trust you for the 24 seven global family prayer platform to last? Can God trust you? Can God trust you? Can God trust you that with you holding on to your own session, I have one hour in a week, that one hour in a week is mine before the Lord. I'm going to hold on to it so passionately. I'm going to be intentional not to allow any form of distractions to come my way. It is mine under God's grace to pray. And then let's also remember the Moravians, they agree to the vision of what they were gonna do. They agreed to the vision. Some of us are here on Global Family Platform. Some of us, we don't even know what the vision is about. We haven't taken the time to go to the website. Just go to the website, the Global Family website. Look at what is expected of you to do. What are we about? What is this about? What am I expected to pray about? What am I expected to focus on when I take over my hour? And some of us just come to the hour, we want to do our own thing. No, the Moravian never did that. If they were to do that, that the revival would never last. They were united in vision. This is what this is about. You want to pray for end time revival. You want to pray for the unreached people's group. You want to pray for unity in the body of Christ. We want to love on one another. We want to give grace to one another. That's why we are a global family. A family give grace to one another because not every member of a family are equal. There are levels of grace that God has given to each one of us. But I'm going to love you irrespective. I'm going to give grace to you irrespective. I'm going to walk with you irrespective. They were intentional about the vision. Beloved, let's remind ourselves of what made their revival to last. Number one, they came together to resist diversity, division, and dissension. They said, no, we are going to create an atmosphere 
of unity, of love. Then they passionately committed to prayer. And then they opened an atmosphere of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible said in the grass, it's there's not by power, not by mind, but by my spirit, says the Lord. This thing cannot be done in the arm of the flesh. The fire of consistency in the place of prayer cannot be done in the arm of the flesh. You need the Holy Spirit. And we need to open up to him to equip us, to anoint us, to empower us to run this journey together. Number three, they had an undying passion for the word of God. Everything has to be in the standard of God's word, in standard of God's word, in standard of God's word, in alignment to the word of God. They were so thirsty for the word and they made the word of God a foundation. And eventually they declare a motto, what is called their mission statement. I am praying for all of us on this platform today. And that's why I believe that the spirit of the Lord wanted us to use the next one hour to pray into global family prayer platform. That the Lord, we don't know how far he's going to take us on this journey. But we want to say, Lord, here am I. I want to be like those 24 men and 24 women that you cherished and you used. They never knew it was going to last a hundred years. They never knew how long it was going to last. They never knew it was going to be the part of the global revival. They never, they never knew. They only said, Lord, here I am. And I want to believe that the Lord is calling those of us on the platform today. Say, can I count on you? Who can I send? Will you be available for me? Will you do this for me? Will you do this for me? Will you own this vision for me? The Lord is asking you, will you own this vision for me? Will you see this beyond Granberry, beyond Jason Harvard, beyond Jonathan Fries, beyond whatever the name behind it? Will you see this between me and you and make it a heritage? Can I count on you to make this a heritage? Can you believe me together to create, to be intentional about creating an atmosphere that the Holy Spirit of God can walk through you and make impact on the global family platform? Will you give room to that thirst for the word of God? Passionate about God's word. Will you agree together to be intentional about what is essential, what is non-essential, what is fundamental, what is non-fundamental for the sake of our common objective. May the Lord God bless you. May the Lord God be with you. May you be one of those that the Lord will count upon. 10 years time, may we still see you on the platform. 20 years down the line, as long as God has ordained that global family exists, may you be one of those that the Lord will say, I know I can count on her because it is a journey between me and her.